Serial killers on paintings. The two go quite well together, especially if the killer in question is good with a brush. Well, I have a treat for you all today. Today, we shall take a gander at some of the finest art to ever be produced in the Commonwealth, and the throat-cutting genius behind it, Pickman's Gallery, a pre-war house tucked away behind a blood-red door, just down the ways from Cabot House. This is what will likely lead you here. The calling card left on the bodies of various readers, taunting whoever discovers them, during them, to find him. Not these readers, though. They were my prey. Now let's take a gander at this lovely place. So straight off, we find a severed bloody hand and a case, which sets the mood perfectly, even if you weren't tracking a serial killer. The next room blows the mood away. Corpses, paintings, a body in a coffin, and a thermostat to make sure the temperature is just right. So before we take a look at the paintings and all the rest, let's listen to the hollow tip we find on this body. Seth, it's me. I found out what happened to the scouts who went missing up near the old art gallery. They're, they're dead, Seth. I I'm looking at a, a goddamn painting of Cal's body. Oh God, what the hell did I do to him? Admiring my collection. I'm afraid it's not complete yet. Soon, though. Stay away from me, you psycho! Yes. Just like that. Hold that expression on your face. So the readers track the carnage to this old art gallery and find paintings depicting the deaths of their friends. Then Pikmin showed up and presumably killed the reader that we found the holotape on though he doesn't seem to have done much to the body at this point. We can assume, then, that all the paintings depict the various victims of Pikmin, presumably in their last moments, or at least some of them were. The meaning behind them is a mystery, though each is quite gruesome. Towards the right-hand side of the room, many of the paintings seem to stop depicting people, and start depicting otherworldly entities, especially this one with the eyes. Perhaps that's exactly what he was painting. In the center of the room, Piles of gore have been set up around a makeshift altar, with heads on spikes surrounding each of its corners. The remains of the subjects of the paintings are presumably located inside these piles. Some of the paintings even sort of match with the expressions on the faces, though of course some do not, so it could just be a coincidence. The kitchen has remains of yet more corpses in it, though some parts have not been as minced as others have been. A slight hole in the wall hints at a passageway within it, and we will get to that. The last painting up here depicts a man screaming, and I wonder if it was based on the head that you can find in the sink. The toilet has many plungers inside of it. You know where I'm going with this, right? Shelter. The strange plunger room in Fallout 3, that we covered some time ago. This room reminds me of that, though I'm not suggesting that Pikmin is the same person. This is quite a few years later, and the person in the plunger room was clearly on drugs, not murdering corpses and painting them. Now we can head upstairs to take a look at more of this fine artist's workspace. On this floor, we can find several bodies laid out on various tables or beds. I think they were most likely in the process of being pieces of art. If downstairs is any indication at all, he clearly cuts up and rearranged the bodies before working on them. So these may have been some of the newest bodies before the raider we found downstairs showed up. The raiders that attacked this place must have interrupted his work and prevented him from processing them and not just for painting subjects, as we will soon see. The next floor up has Pikmin's bedroom, which is actually not that bad. You know, besides the coffins. Now before we go any further, I do want to talk about them. This house backs up onto an old graveyard, so I think it's likely that he stole the caskets out of it in order to have a place to store the bodies, as he clearly likes to paint the subjects while the cadaver was fresh, so this would give him somewhere to store them. That, and the frozen patches on the ground, makes me think he may have been using a cooling agent and the coffins in order to keep the bodies appropriately preserved and fresh, so he could start painting and capturing their last moments before their gobs rotted off. Now, we journey into the hollow walls that allow us access to the basement. However, a master locked door in the kitchen also allows us in. 
The only skeletal corpse in this section seems to be here. Some greedy git classmate lunchbox until death. Though without knowing more about the history of this building, we may never know why. Up against the windows here we can find large mounds of rubble. A spade is sticking out of this one, so it may have been tended to recently. At first, it looks normal enough, but the next one has some bones sticking out of it. So I think Pikmin may have buried some of the bodies here, or the remains of them at least. It is inside this basement that we come to his last painting, and presumably the one he worked on just before the raiders showed up, if the discarded brush and paint are anything to go on. Paint, I would like to point out, that is made of blood. So all of his paintings are most likely in blood, though Moses knows where he got the black and yellow from. It depicts several shadowy hands reaching for a great eye, with a strange language painted around it. It seems to depict a strange entity or ritual. Sound familiar? Think about it. All these paintings were made by killing someone, and then taking their blood and using it to capture their last moments in a grotesque parody on a canvas. Then the bodies were minced and set up on an altar, in the middle of all the paintings. Also, the focus on eyes and sight. I think these paintings were meant to be a tribute or a sacrifice, as a way of getting some entity to pay attention and look this way. Behind it is a huge pile of corpses. They were either part of the process of making this painting, or was an attempt by Pikmin to scar off the raiders. At this point, we find ourselves in the foundation for this and various other buildings, as well as the sewers. Down this left passage is a poor sod clinging onto their luggage for dear life most likely a death during the war, and not Pikmin. As we descend into the sewers, there is a ledge that we can make our way onto, though only if you don't drop down. Inside it, the remains of someone who, while presumably injured, instead of going for the medkit, not two meters away, instead went for their cigarettes. They chose addiction over living. Sad. Now to touch on the influence of Pikmin. He is based on Richard Upton Pikmin, a Boston painter in the short story Pikmin's Model by H.P. Lovecraft. Yeah, explains a lot, doesn't it? In the story, he paints horrific and gruesome scenes. So gruesome, in fact. The Boston Art Club kicked him out and everyone ostracized him like a leper. The narrator is telling his friend about a tour he took of Pikmin's gallery, as, by this point, Pikmin has disappeared. The gallery was located in a run-down house in the slums, like this one. As they got deeper inside, the pictures grew more grotesque and warped, until they finally arrived at the final, fucked up masterpiece. It depicted a giant canine, not of this world. Pikmin heard a noise and left the room, firing his gun once he did. The narrator then took a piece of paper off of the painting. Pikmin returned and said he shot some rats. The narrator then realised that he had taken the paper with him, and then unrolled it so he could take a look. It was a photo of the canine, however it was not the painting. Pikmin used an actual, otherworldly creature as a subject, perhaps the very creature that he had to leave the room to shoot. Now we don't know why he disappeared, but I'm going to guess otherworldly shenanigans. Now all this brings up the question, if the person he is based on used real models, what did Pikmin use for his clearly non-human ones? You may have noticed that a lot of water is irradiated down here, and that many barrels of waste seem to have been placed here for that reason. I think it's possible that this is once again related to the whole, these otherworldly entities thrive on radiation. Perhaps this is why he uses the blood. Not only is it part of the sacrifice, but it is irradiated as well. When the raiders chased him down here, he may have placed the barrels so that, as they progressed, they would become more radiated, as he always intended to use them as subjects. Eventually, we find him cornered by the raiders and their leader, Slab, ready to enact revenge for everything he did against them and theirs. So you need to kill Slab and the other raiders to save Pikman, and then we can talk to him. But first, let's have a look around. So a lot of stuff is lying around here, though not all of it is junk. We can find the lock pecking bobblehead here beside the bin, and it makes the sweet spot for locks larger. Then we can talk to Pikman. Hi. <sighs> that was close. Thank you. Those people deserve worse than death. Why did they want you so badly? <laughs> a small disagreement. They objected to my hobby of collecting their heads. Let me repay you. What did you have in mind? A gift. Nothing more. If you visit my house again, look deep within my painting, Picnic for Stanley, and you will find my gratitude. 
You'll need this. Hi. See you around, killer. So he is thankful that we saved him, and gives us a key, which starts the short quest Pikmin's Gift. An issue of Awesome Tales can also be found on here, as can a steamer trunk full of shit loot. Then we can use his key to get out into the ruins of another house, which is actually pretty funny as this one has many nice and calm paintings inside of it, instead of ones that depict, you know, suffering and sadness. Though I still like Pikmin's more. When we arrive back in the house, we can make the painting teleport off the wall and then get access to his safe. Inside we can find some ammo, a note from him, a thank you note mind, and his blade, which since it was wielded by an insane serial killer, of course it causes bleeding and prolongs the suffering. The note thanks us, and calls us a killer. Think about that, a serial killer that minces bodies and uses their blood to paint and capture their last moments, considers us a killer on par with them, and thanks us. Sounds like we might need to reevaluate our life choices. We need to kill more. So this was Pikmin's Gallery, based on Richard Upman Pikmin from the short story by H.P. Lovecraft, Pikmin's Model. Pikmin was a serial killer who mutilated raiders and then captured their last moments on canvas, using their blood as paint. He then arranged them in shrines, or as if he was performing a ritual, and based on some of the entities depicted in this painting, it's entirely possible he was. In the story, Pikmin used actual, otherworldly creatures as models for his paintings, and I believe that the same thing may have happened here. The eyes and entities seem to depict something looking at him, and I think these murders, rituals and paintings are a way in which he can get the attention of those entities. The final painting seems to be the entity finally looking, noticing the people below, or the gate being opened. The painting is in fact almost directly below the shrine in the main painting room, so perhaps this placement was on purpose, and was all part of the ritual. This does seem to be related to some of the other strange and supernatural phenomenon that have occurred in the Commonwealth. Supernatural themes that we are not yet done with. However, today we are, and we leave this accursed gallery with the knowledge that my finger painting is better. brutal serial killer and his surprisingly lovely painting. I hope you enjoyed our look at it. If you did like it, give the video a like, and if you want regular updates, subscribe. Any suggestions for lore or future videos should be left in the comments below. Better yet, go on to my subreddit so we can discuss them in more detail. It's linked in the description. If you wish to, you can support me on Patreon, which is also linked in the description. Go have a gander at the rewards. Follow me on Twitter or Facebook to get regular updates or have a wee chat. Any business you wish to discuss, email me at enthapple.business at gmail.com and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I hope you enjoyed the episode and I hope to see you in the next one. And until then, goodbye.